So today we are going to start uh, the lymphatic system. We have been discussing the microcirculation and lymphatic system. We have completely discussed the microcirculation and today we are going to start the lymphatic system. It is going to be simple easy series of lectures about the lymphatic system. So basically first of all what is lymphatic system? Lymphatic system basically it's a system it's a system that represents an accessory route through which fluid can flow from interstitial spaces into the blood so it's it lymphatic system basically represents an accessory route it represents an accessory route an extra route normally the fluid from the interstitial fluid this is a capillary this is the arterial side of the capillary and this is the venous side of the capillary and here we have the interstitial cells or the interstitium basically at the capillary level we have discussed again and again that the fluid move out of the capillary and it goes into the capillary at the arterial side it goes out and at the venous side it goes in there are a lot of forces which are pulling the fluid in the blood out of the capillary and there are a lot of forces which are pushing the fluid into the capillary but we have discussed that the flu the forces that are pushing the fluid out of the capillary when they are combined their combined value is 28.3 millimeter of mercury and the forces which are trying to move the fluid from the interstitial spaces into the capillary into the venous side of the capillary when they are combined their combined value is about 28 mm of mercury the the force is basically included the plasma uh, colloid osmotic pressure the interstitial fluid osmotic pressure and colloid pressure similarly uh, so when the when we when we finally summarize the forces we see that the forces that are moving the fluid out of the capillary is 0.3 mm of mercury more than the fluid or the forces which are moving which are trying to move the fluid in inside the capillary so fluid forces forces moving the fluid out are 28.3 forces moving the fluid into the capillary are 28 mm of mercury so this 0.3 mm of mercury force this is basically extra on the arterial side so the fluid that is pushed into the interstitial cells is more than the fluid that is absorbed again from the interstitial cells or the interstitium into the capillary so basically somewhat more fluid is pushed out as compared to the amount of fluid that is absorbed on the venous side so to compensate this extra to compensate this extra pressure or to compensate for those molecules which cannot be absorbed here into the capillary there is an alternative and accessory route that is known as the lymphatic system and the lymphatic system basically it also consists of some vessels that are present in the interstitium and these vessels that are shown here with the green color these lymphatic vessels basically they carry the large molecules especially the proteins from the interstitium into the uh, blood lymphatic system carry proteins and large molecules or large particles basically when the uh, some of the proteins which get filtered through the capillary wall into the interstitium that cannot be reabsorbed into the venous side of the capillary due to insufficient pressure that proteins and that large particles they they get bit carried away with the help of lymphatic channels now the lymphatic system that is present throughout the human body it is present throughout the human body so all body organs have special lymph channels except there are few organs in the human body which does not have the lymphatic uh, channels and they include the superficial skin the central nervous system which include the brain and the spinal cord the endomysium of the muscle and bones so these are the few structures in the human body the skin the superficial skin the central nervous system the endomysium of the muscles and bones that do not have the 
lymph channels but although they do not have the lymphatic vessels but they do have small channels that are known as the prelymphatics so they also have prelymphatics that are basically small channels which ultimately take the fluid from the in interstitium into the lymphatic vessels which empties into the lymphatic vessels so all the body organs have special lymph channels except the superficial skin central nervous system endomysium of the muscles and bones but even these tissues have channels known as prelymphatics which empties into the lymphatic vessels or lymphatic vessels or the central nervous system or the uh, sorry cerebrospinal fluid in the central nervous system in the brain and the spinal cord we do not have the lymphatics we have the prelymphatics and that prelymphatics basically they carry the 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 fluid from the interstitium and they empty into the cerebrospinal fluid otherwise they will empty into the lymphatic vessels uh, in the bones and in the superficial skin and endomysium of the muscles now how basically how the lymphatic system works and where they empty basically how the where the lymphatic vessels basically empty so lymph uh, from the left side of the body left arm and left side of head empty into the thoracic duct which eventually empty into blood at the junction of left inter internal jugular vein and left subclavian left subclavian vein so basically lymph from the left side of the body this is basically the left side of the body left arm and left side of the head and neck it basically empties into the thoracic duct it is the, here we have the thoracic duct and this thoracic duct bit basically empties into the blood into the venous blood at the junction of left internal jugular vein and left subclavian vein here is the left subclavian vein and it its junction with the left internal jugular vein the thoracic duct will empty so the lymph from the left side of the body from the left side of the body the left arm and the the left side of the head and neck it will basically drain into the thoracic duct it will drain into the thoracic duct in the thoracic duct duct basically it will empty the lymph into the venous blood at the junction of left subclavian vein and left internal jugular vein the lymph from the right side of the uh, uh, from the right arm right side of the head basically enter the right lymphatic duct right arm and right side of the head right arm and right side of the head and neck and some parts of the right right sides of the thorax it basically enters the right lymphatic duct it enters the right lymphatic duct and right lymphatic duct empty into the blood at the junction of right subclavian vein an internal right internal jugular vein so lymph from the right arm right side of the head and right side of the thorax it enters into the right lymphatic duct instead of the thoracic duct and this right lymphatic duct empties into the into the blood at the junction of right subclavian vein and right internal jugular vein so here we have the junction of the right subclavian and right internal jugular vein and its jung at, at its junction the right lymphatic duct will open so to summarize the lymphatic system basically represents an extra system or accessory system through which fluid can flow from the interstitial spaces into the blood so this is an accessory system which drains the fluid from the interstitial spaces into the blood normally the the pressure in the capillaries is on the arterial side is high and the venous side is low so a pressure so more fluid get filtered through the capillaries as compared to the fluid absorbed so some amount of fluid is left in the interstitium and that fluid mostly includes the proteins and large particles which get carried away with the help of special vessels known as lymphatics 
The lymphatics are present throughout the human body except the superficial skin, central nervous system, endomysium of the muscles and bones. But these structures which do not have the lymphatic vessels, they also have some channels known as the pre-lymphatics. Now the pre-lymphatics in the brain and spinal cord will empty into the cerebrospinal fluid while pre-lymphatics of these other organs will empty, ultimately empty into the lymphatic vessels. So instead of the lymphatic vessels, they have the pre-lymphatics. But ultimately the pre-lymphatics are going to empty into the lymphatic vessels. And they mostly, these lymphatic vessels mostly will carry the proteins and large particles which will not be able to get absorbed into the capillaries through the capillary pore. Now basically the lymph from the left side of the body, the left side of the body, the left arm and the left side of the head and neck basically empty into the thoracic duct while the limb from the right arm right side of the body uh, right thorax and the right side of the head and neck basically empties into the right lymphatic duct the thoracic duct basically empties into the blood at the junction of right subclavian vein and right internal jugular vein while the right lymphatic duct empties into the venous blood at the junction of right, sub, uh, right subclavian vein and right internal jugular vein. The thoracic duct at the junction of left subclavian and left internal jugular vein while right lymphatic duct at the junction of right subclavian and right internal jugular vein. So that's all about the introduction of the lymphatic system. Thanks a lot for watching the video.